SMQBs, episode 118. Milk, I'm teeing up a question for you. This is for you directly. Wow. Is it on the NBA? Uh, right off the bat. In the 2012 Major League Baseball draft, the Boston Red Sox selected this Florida pitcher who um, he's right-handed. He pitched, made his major league debut for the Red Sox June 17, 2017, and his last MLB appearance was September 28, 2017, with an 0-0 record and a .52 ERA and 14 strikeouts. Do you remember who your Florida pitcher was? Yeah. He lasted three months. He was teammates with Mike Zanino. Uh huh. He batted 303 with the Gators and made 53 appearances as a pitcher, striking out 78, walking 14 in 82 and a third innings with a 1.86 ERA. Come on, Milk, you're a Florida guy. I, I know. I'm trying to think who this could be. Oh, I'm drawing a blank, man. All Does right. Anybody know of this? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, you're going to say it. I'm going to know it. But uh, um, is... he had uh, rotator cuff surgery and didn't play again in the majors. He retired in February of 2020. It is one Austin Maddox. Do you remember uh, Austin Maddox? I remember him. All right. Never. And uh, in case anybody's wondering, last year's 118th pick was Jake Madden. He's a pitcher, 6'6", 185 pounds, out of Northwest Florida State College. He currently has a 5.0. I know, right? Did you even know there was a Northwest no. Florida State College? It's actually in Niceville, Florida. Oh, of course. Lo lovely place. Oh, love right by Pleasantville. Place. It's, yes, exactly. it's right on the border with Alabama. He's currently 0-4 oh. with a 5.0 ERA in a ball. So we probably have a similar so feature. So he's going to be it. doing something else by the time we right. have episode 119. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So <laughs> welcome to 118. We are, uh, we've got playoffs, playoffs, and some trash talk to talk about today. Let's get right into it. Out. NBA Finals. We are two games in. We stayed up late to report on, uh, on game seven. And here we are. What's going on? I think all of America and maybe even Canada exhaled that we now have a series. Like, thank God, uh, because through seven quarters of basketball, it was not looking very likely that there was going to be much of a series. And um, here's how unlikely last night's Heat win was over the Nuggets. The Heat hadn't won there since November 2016. That's a long, long time. And the Nuggets hadn't even lost at home since March 30th. They don't lose at home. And one of the stats that's going around that I, I, I find not only fascinating, but a reason why the Heat have a real good chance of winning this whole thing, the Nuggets are almost unstoppable at home. Like I said, they hadn't lost since March 30th. They have a 650 winning percentage at home, but away they are 325. Yeah, they don't win on the road. Putrid. Well, they are not. problem in, against Phoenix and L.A., though. They, they did not. They, they, and that, that's reason to think that they'll be fine. But the Heat are really good at home. And the Nuggets are a different team away. And I think, you know, what everybody knows is that the Heat in game one went to the free throw line twice, a record low two times to the free throw line and they went to the free throw line 20 times. They got more physical last night. And if Denver and Denver has the size to be as physical as they want. And if I'm Denver, I'm getting a lot more physical for the rest of the series. I'm giving the heat, the free throw line, if they want it. And, you know, I'm just out muscling them down low. Um, I, I, th th this game is, you know, we talked about it many times on this pod, but this series has become like who, can be the streakiest from the three-point line and the heat were shutting 
just just knocking down everything, particularly in the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, they they got physical as they needed to last night. And I don't know, I still, my prediction before we went in this series was Nuggets and six. I still like that, but the Heat have made things awfully, awfully interesting. And these role players, and, I, and we were talking about it for a moment, you know, like where, where do the role players go? And then all of a sudden, right after that text went out, the role players went nuts last night. I just, I find this out, like astounding that Gabe Vincent and Caleb Martin, you know, and Max Strews, and, and even Haywood Highsmith, these are guys getting quality minutes, all of whom are undrafted. Don't forget progressive, boy. Don't forget and Duncan, Duncan Hines. And Duncan, Duncan Hines. Robinson's. Duncan Hines so, changed so the game I, last night. I think the story of game one and game two is, is Spo again, making this huge adjustment. Because in game one, the uh, Nuggets buried the heat early with the high-low high post game where they had Jok- Jokic at the high post and Gordon – was just getting feeds and dunking. He had, he had like 14 quick points dunking because there was no one big enough to guard him if Bam was out there guarding uh, Jokic. So Spo starts um, Kevin Love in game two, and he was physical enough to handle Gordon somewhat, and it made a huge difference. And then the the you know the role players, sure, they came alive, but they were wide fucking open hitting these threes because Denver's defense was just pathetic. Michael yeah, but Porter. They, they, they were <laughs> wide open in game one, too, and they missed those shots. I mean, that guy, what's his name? Christian Braun, that little yeah, white Brown. guy. On Denver. He, <laughs> you want Michael Porter <laughs> Jr. Michael Porter Jr. was pay, playing such pathetic defense that um, Coach Malone thought it would be better to have Braun in or whatever his name is playing defense. And he would like just follow the guy rolling, and so two got there would be a pick and roll. Two guys on the on the uh, Nuggets would follow the guy who rolled, leaving the other guy wide open for a three. I mean, you just can't leave Duncan Robinson wide open every time. As eventually he's going to start hitting. The crazy thing too is, you know, you you, you mentioned uh, Martin, and of course Martin didn't do shit. Right. No. I mean, Martin is is nothing like the Martin who was playing in the in the Celtics series. Right. But you still look at that and you've got I mean, look at this. The balance. Jimmy Butler, 21. Bam, 21. Gabe Vincent. Fuck is Gabe Vincent. Right. Gabe Vincent, 23. <laughs> we said that in the Celtics series. Yeah. 23 you know, and Strews, 14. Game. He's the one who's been the most consistent. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there you go. I mean, that's all spread out pretty well. Um Plus, they went, you know, 17 for 35 from three compared to like 13 for 39 or something in game one. And Jimmy Butler's not completely healthy. No, 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 one, no one really is. So, you know, he's doing all of that. Uh, not not completely healthy and able to still get everybody involved in the game. And when it mattered in the fourth quarter, he hit the big shots. Just, yep. a, just a pile on Joe Missoula one last time. <laughs> oh, wow. It took the Nuggets one game to figure out how to play offense against the Heat with that high-low post. The Celtics have Horford and Rob Williams and didn't try that once in six games. And yet the Celtics decided to rehire Missoula as head coach for next year. I don't get it. I mean, this fucking guy, he's not even coaching right now, and he's getting buried again. I mean, seriously. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. You know – I, I holding his head underwater at this point. Yeah, to your point about about the Celtics, you know the the teams that fell by the wayside, uh, the Celtics and the Sixers. You know these were teams that were focusing on one or two guys for their entire offense. You know, but the Heat, to Bison's point, they they have five guys on the floor in the fourth quarter, and you can't really say that one of them is worthless on the floor. All of them are capable of scoring. All of them are capable of scoring from the outside. And while Jimmy hit some big shots in the fourth quarter, you know, there were huge shot, huge shots from Struess and Vincent and Martin in the fourth quarter. They're all moving too. They're, they're playing a nice motion offense. So even if a guy's not hot, he's setting picks and rolling and let, let me know. run this stat by you. How does, how does this, how does this happen in a game that you lose by three points? These are the, the plus minuses for their starters, for the, the Nuggets. 
Gordon, minus seven. Porter Jr., minus 15. Jokic, minus 11. Murray, minus two. Caldwell uh, Pope, minus 14. How, how do you lose three and every one of your starters is is on the minus side? Like every one. Isn't that weird? I mean, Isn't that a weird means, stat? Yeah. For the small amount of time that your bench was playing, your bench was playing better defense than your starters. Yeah, plus 12 for Jeff Green, plus 14 for Brown, and uh, and plus eight for Braun. That's crazy. That's a crazy yeah. stat. And yeah. for Jokic to be minus 11 with 41 points? I got to tell you, if, uh, he, if the Heat win game three, the Nuggets are – they're pressure. definitely in a little bit of trouble. Pressure. What's that? Pressure. Jamal, yeah, a lot of pressure. Jamal Murray needs to play better too. Is this two games in Miami and then 1-1-1, one, 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 or do they do three and then back for two? 2-2, two, 1-1-1. Two, one, one, one. It is. Okay. Um, so for a three-point game, there was a five-point swing that may have been caused by the refs as well. Um, Jimmy Butler stepped out of bounds by, by the width of his entire foot and then passed the guy, passed a guy who sunk a three and then bam goaltended on a play that they, that didn't get called. So that's five points right there. Yeah. But for a three point game, there were six points that the nuggets never, ever had to give up on the dumbest fouls yeah. Yeah. by Contavious yeah. Caldwell Pope yeah. on those yeah. two three point totally shots totally that right. were either nothing on the clock or from miles away, just two of the dumber fouls I've ever seen. You're right. You're right. The goal, the goaltending call, I mean, non-call was, it was pretty close. I mean, it, it was definitely on its way down, but it, it felt like that ball just kept going up and up when they were showing the slow-mo replay. It was like, surely it's going to start coming back down at some point, And it didn't, it was, it was really strange. Miller, really you're sitting up there really the- quiet. Do you do you even know yeah, what we're I talking mean, about? You understand? Oh, I, I, I know it's what called you're basketball. It's orange. I know. No, no. I know like what you're talking about, kind of. and I'm listening to. You know, I've been listening to all the radio stations since Denver started winning, and all I keep hearing is how the other team is better. How the Suns should have beaten the Nuggets. How the Lakers made this great comeback in Game One and then lost in four. I don't know if it's going to be a series yet. Can, um, can, can you, I'm sorry, before what, you go on though, before you, can you explain to Milk what a radio station is? <laughs> <laughs> not sure he knows. He, he's got his you, transistor in his office. Is that the no. thing I listen to in my car sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call you on the phone later, okay? Do you have yeah, a what, when you, do you undo have a Apple CarPlay, can there's a radio. Do, you have, yeah. a, do you have a landline I can call? No, but mm-hmm. you know what? I'm so. The, the number of pundits out there who just talk about the recency of one game and suddenly make this conclusion about what the series is going to be. Yeah, right. We there's have no reason, idea when game reason, three is going to First of all, it's a, set, it's, it's a best of seven. All I kept best hearing, of five. Best uh, of five. Okay. And all I kept hearing was about how great uh, the Lakers were in trying to come back against the Nuggets, and they lost 4-0. We're talking about a Miami Heat team that blew a 3-0 lead against the Celtics and, and squeaked out a seventh game, okay? They are not a great team by any means, okay? These role players, they're on a roll. That's right. Why are they in eighth spot in the division and almost didn't, or in this conference, and almost didn't get through the play? They're on an incredible roll, but I don't think they're a great team, and I'd be shocked if they win more than – one or two games in this that's it i mean denver's a better team wow i wow. think moose moose is just pissed that the world's greatest flopper left toronto for the heat <laughs> oh, i thought you were going to talk about the greatest flopper as a coach kyle lowry <laughs> oh he's a good flopper he's and the that, best that's, that's what they've been saying about the heat since you know they were underdogs against yeah. <laughs> against the bucks underdogs yeah. against the celtics yeah. Yeah. Uh, they had to win just to get into the tournament to the, just to get into the yeah. playoffs. I mean, they love it. They want you to but, continue to underrate them. But why? But every, there's a hate on about the Nuggets. No one in the media you know wants what? Nuggets. Right. What is right. that all about? So what is I am that so all tired about? of hearing this. There is not a hate hate First of all, Nuggets. Mark Jackson and Van Gundy are basically on their knees for Jokic this entire oh season. Is, is ridiculous. I'm not talking about the play by play guys. I'm talking about the ESPNs and the TNTs and all the other 
They're talk, always talking about the team that the Nuggets are playing. They're never talking about how good the Nuggets are. To say that's that's my impression. I, I don't know Denver. what more you, you can say about them. They, they had the MVP two out of the last three years. They're in the finals. They're, they're, they're saying a lot more about Murray and Jokic than, than the Heat no, but during I'm, the broadcast. No, but Toby, what I'm saying is during the Lakers series, all you heard about are how the Lakers are going to do this, that, and what they did. You never heard about how good Denver was in that series. It was about LeBron and the Lakers. Well, do I hear you what think you're that- saying. I hear what you're saying, actually. I mean, it was sort of the the quietest number one seed uh, in a long time, right? Like everybody was yeah. was ex- interested in the Suns because of KD, the Warriors because of Steph, the Lakers because of LeBron. I, I, it is sort of true that that I think everybody sort of just assumed the Nuggets would be in the conference finals. And, and from there, it was like, who, who's going to take them on, though? But I, I really, I mean, listen, if you listen to Bill Simmons today, you know, Bill was basically, if, if the Nuggets had won last night, he was ready to put them up in the echelons of some of the greatest teams of all time. Um, now, if they come back and win this series four to one, you, you could have that conversation again. But don't, don't you guys think, though, that there's going to be a Jimmy Butler game? Right. No, there's, there's going to be. You, yes. No, you don't think so. I think there's no. going to be one Jimmy Butler no. game. No. Hmm, interesting. Well, I think there needs to be a Michael Porter Jr. game. I mean, he's like six ten. So if you play Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. down low, with going back to the game one game plan with Jokic feeding them from the high post, one of those guys is too big for somebody on the Heat to guard. You can put Kevin Love in there all you want, but he can only guard one of those guys after that you've got a small forward trying to guard a 610 guy why is michael porter floating around at the three point line you know he was just lost in game 2 offensively and defensively they need to get his head back on mm-hmm. i think in game 3 if I, if i'm malone i'm turning jokic into a true post low post center and not a point center yes he's amazing with this court vision but they can dominate as much as they want with him down low i mean it's rare that he misses a shot down low yeah yeah and he can just back bam out of the way there's no one that could stop him he's a massive mountain of a person but having said that in the first game when they were so efficient what did they say? He had two shots in the first half or something. Right, and he had like right. nine assists at halftime. Yeah. I mean, he would rather, and, and there's an argument to be made that that offense works better when he's not scoring 41 points. I mean, look, what, what did we just say? He was minus 11 mm-hmm. yep. and he scored 41. So so Jamal, right. J- Jamal Murray's been a, 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 a great playoff player. Uh, he had one bad game last night. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't 0 for 10. Uh, but, tr- but if you look at his track record, He's going to come back and he'll get 25 to 30 points and, and, and shoot the lights out. That's his track record. So, you know, you, I, you can't look at playoffs in one game. It, it's, it's, you got to look at how they're doing throughout. And I, I don't, I, Murray's too good a player. to be. Yeah. Talking. But there's a, there's a, there's just a feeling of heat destiny. It's oh, a little, but there's a little, culture. there's a little destiny though. That's starting to feel, I mean, there is no reason for this Heat team A to be there and B to be tied 1-1. The, the one thing that we're not talking about is, and I beat this drum all during the playoffs, is Spo is the best coach. And that is a huge factor in this, in this series. Why does he never get any credit? Oh, they just, put, they've already got him. He's in the top. He's, he's probably in the top I know, five you're right, Milk. coaches. I think he's recognized in the top I, five all time, know. but definitely I, in the top 10. I think he doesn't get the credit because he was always Le'Bron considered. Him? No, the puppet of Pat Riley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yes, true. That's why. Absolutely. That's why. That, well, that's I think, my impression. And I don't think he is the puppet I mean, of Pat Riley now, maybe when he started. Malone, but, Malone should have called a timeout at, when they had the ball and a chance to tie. And I realize, you know, no, I don't think off, so. They got off a good shot. Yeah. It was a hurried shot. I, I'm not sure that was the greatest shot. I think no matter what, we can all agree, no matter what happens, that this NBA playoffs, this NBA finals has been a great success for no other reason that one Patrick Michler stayed up past 10 o'clock 
and <laughs> yeah, watched right. the game towards wow. end. M- Milk says even even that was exciting for me. And it was. I've never seen basketball before. I, I learned like three players' names too, which was crazy. <laughs> and I don't, you know, I think our listeners need to know how excited Nace got when the Heat won. Mm. Pope that will was, tell you that's the first symptom. Listen, yesterday was a rough transfer is happening. Yesterday it's, was a you rough see he's day. wearing heat colors today. He's our was, host, yeah, he is. He is. You think he sent that text and tried he was like, yeah, oh, shit. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I think the DC the DC apartment's up for sale soon. <laughs> <laughs> now, nice heat color uh, time. the Panthers can come through. Right. It's starting. Right. So we've got games uh three on Wednesday, game four on Friday. Game five on Monday. So when we come back, I guess we'll have to decide if we're going to do another uh, midnight run of Paul Revere, as as Mill called it, on midnight on Monday. Five. But well, now, now that he knows he can stay up that late, we might as well. Let's I'm give predictions. This series. I'm Slay off the Mick Ultras game. during the day. Yeah. How does this series <laughs> go back to Denver? Let's let's uh, let's just go there. Let's say. What's the score? Get predictions. Pope, start with you. What are we going back to Denver at? Going back 2-2, and I got the Nuggets winning game three and the Heat winning game four. House? I'm the opposite of Pope. 2-2, but the Heat win game three and the Nuggets win game four. Miller? Uh, 3-1, Denver going home. Milk? Uh, The Heat have to win one game, so... I guess it's 2-2. Two, two. All I'm right, back. Rooster, I'm going to give you the last word. I've got it. 3-1 Heat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Heat. I'm with, I'm with Moose. I'm with Moose. 3-1 Nuggets. All it's right. a big, wow. big week in Miami. And I think the Malone's, Malone's going to whip them into shape. The, game it. one showed you how much better they are than the Heat. All well, right. Malone's just going to yell at them and tell them they need to play better. I mean, you know, that's yeah. good coaching. All right. Anything else on NBA? Well, nothing says Stanley Cup finals like South Florida. Um, <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> Moose Jaw. What is going on? Tell us where we are in the Cup. What's happening? What's going to happen? If I'm a Florida Panthers fan, I am really, really worried right now for one reason. The five goal has Bobrovsky been solved. The ice might melt. Um, you know, with <laughs> that's not the reason. <laughs> you know, Flor- Florida's gotten where they are, like so many teams, to the Stanley Cup Finals on the back of a hot, hot goalie. But you got to you got to have that hot goalie through the finals. So that next game, if Vegas gets out and scores a early goal or two, it's it's going to be four or five games. It's going to be four or five games. Florida, I mean, Florida, I know a lot of people said team of destiny, but they've ridden Bobrovsky. And it's going to yeah, turn Kachuk. on. Him. No, it's going to, it's Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky always put them in a position to let Kachuk have those opportunities. And, you know, again, it's not a new story. The hottest, the team with the hottest goalie usually wins the Stanley Cup. Maybe it might be the reason Dallas didn't get in there. I went when when when, when, (laughs) when the Panthers tied it up two to two. I thought, oh, they've got the momentum; they're going to win this game. And I think I must have gone somewhere. Came back and look up, and Vegas has scored three goals. I mean, that was crazy. I mean, part of the reason a team can play as well as they did is when they have such you know the confidence in their goalie is just you know at a different level. The question is: Is their confidence in Bobrovsky going to be there for game two? And that's why that first first in that first period is going to be so crucial to how Florida's uh, series is going to go. So what what what's what's Vegas been riding? Why 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 has it been working for them all playoff long? What's their secret? I wish I could tell you. If I could, I'd, I'd probably I mean, be a coach in the NHL. Um, having having they've seen got, them personally, they're fucking fast. They're fast. They, they've got four great lines passing. Jesus, they've got four great lines, and they've got. Uh, a stellar defenseman uh, in Peter Angelo, 
Uh, I know he's a little bit older, but he's a stud and he is tough. And he has the experience of winning a Stanley Cup with St. Louis. Every every team needs a defenseman like that. Uh, listen, Florida has has Ekblad, great defenseman, uh, but you know Vegas just rolls four lines, and the speed is just so incredible. And they are tough, also. They play with an edge, and uh, you know any team that has an ed- plays with an edge and the toughness that they do, they're 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 not going to back down, Frank. I mean, Aiden Hill's pl- he's playing out of his fucking mind i mean that's savior yeah yeah what's yeah, that I mean, thick and it goes back to who has the hottest goalie doesn't so mean I, the best goalie. absolutely it doesn't mean the i have best two, goalie. two questions milk as a devoted lightning fan how do you feel about the panthers being there well i mean it's pretty amazing what they've done this year I mean, so are I you rooting for them or are you, are you oh, rooting for no, the Florida I, team? No, 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 no. I hate, I, I can't stand Florida. They suck. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> I, 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 but I like, as you guys know, a good, a good goalie. And I mean, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch Hill. I mean, he's really good. Um, And I think he's going to, if he plays the way he's been playing, it's like having Vassy when he's playing in his, like, yeah. you can't beat him. And you know what also, and you know what also happens is that the opposing team, when they're having such trouble scoring on these what you would think are goals, and then suddenly these saves, the moral, you know, this demoralizing, and it's like, how the hell are we going to score? Yeah. And if you're down two goals, you're thinking, how do we get three? Right? You know, if it's that, if it's been that tough, so that's why there, there's so many factors that go into that, and you know, the the hot goalie is going to win the Con Smythe and the uh, Stanley Cup. It's funny because Milk, you've got that that image behind you of Hill all spread out. Um, it was ridiculous. Say, right? like right that the stick, like, sh- stick that save? Be saved. That's what I was going to say. It's <laughs> it's it's ironic because if you think back to the the 2018 when the Caps won it, that they the the Golden Knights had an, basically an empty netter with 30 seconds left in Game Two uh, to tie the game up, and and it would have been so deflating. And Holtby made some similar sprawling, ridiculous save, and the Caps never looked back. So it's just funny that Gold, that uh, Vegas is on the other side of that uh, this time. But my second question is, is for everyone is, um, you know, there were reports that the game in Denver last night, the NBA Finals, floor seats were going for like twenty thousand dollars, and I'm looking online right now, and there's tickets for for uh, the game tonight for $152 <laughs> in Vegas. What? <laughs> on the ice? $152? Not on the ice, but that's the starting point. And then that, $385 in Florida for Thursday. Um, that's shockingly <laughs> low, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised. He... In Vegas, you can't do anything for $150 in Vegas. I mean, you can't even what, what have a, lunch like people who couldn't get into Celine Dion are going to go see the, the Stanley Cup. Is that what's happening? Celine Dion sick. she's not she's not. Too much. Oh, thanks for the Canadian <laughs> singer update. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> what are you what are you guys cousins or something? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, do they have a good fan base? They can't possibly have one. I think they have a rabid fan base. In I think they do too. I, mean, I don't understand what I've seen on that. TV. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, Is it? I, don't, I don't know. I don't get that. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to go back to something Moose said. Um, so Moose, the 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 Con Smythe is the MVP of the Stanley Cup Finals, right? That's correct. So if um, you're saying that if either team wins, whoever wins the Stanley Cup Finals, you predict that the Con Smythe will be going to the, that team's goalie. In this yes. series, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And if it if it didn't, who's the offensive player that's the most standout for both teams? Well, definitely Kachuk for Florida, uh, uh-huh. with with the number of overtime goals, um, and offensive. I don't know if I could pinpoint. I mean, Marcia So's had a good playoff, but I would sort of lean towards uh, Peter Angelo, uh, the defenseman for Vegas, as the other MVP for them. 
All right, so we've got we've got a game tonight in Vegas. Then we've got a game Thursday in Florida and a game Saturday in Florida. Miller, at the end of four games, what's the series at? 3-1 Vegas. Okay. Milk? I, uh, I think I agree. 3-1. Can I can I can I give a different answer then? No, <laughs> never. I can't believe I disagreed with him. Oh my god! God, that's so was funny. Rooster, on. Rooster, what do you think? I'm just I'm gonna go just to be different. I'm gonna say two two. Hope, get the broom out. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. house. I'm I'm going with Panther culture. I'm going with three, I'm going with three one Panthers. Yeah, that's not a thing. damn it. Panther, that's what I was going to do. Culture. You beat me to it. Panther culture. So, so, Panther so, so, culture. Is, is, is the, the Panther, Panther culture is the Panther that's a big culture thing. a carryover of the John Van Beesbrook Panthers of 1996? The, the rats are back on the ice. <laughs> wow. What do they What do they say? Uh, uh, to chuck around and find out. Three one, three one <laughs> Panthers. I'm not going against any team it. that starts their game off with two guys on the ice sword fighting. So <laughs> go, go Golden Knights. All right. Anything else on the cup? Right, so I guess in Tampa. I guess it's possible. Then by the next time we record, we've got a we've got a, someone lifting the cup, though, right? We could have a parade already. Yeah, it could yeah, all be nice- over. The nice, that thing won't about happen. Ho- the nice thing about hockey compared to the NBA is that they play every other day. Like, I don't understand why the NBA needs to take so many days off. I have to say, what yeah, I looked like Saturday night, Saturday night, I looked for the score and I was like, what the fuck's going on? They're not playing? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is, this would be Vegas's first professional championship, right? Yeah. 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 Which means, well, no, the this, well like, no, no, the WNBA team won. So, the aces. Oh, this aces. would be their first professional championship. Well, I'm going to get in oh, trouble for that. Wow. First men's. Oh, no. Men's. <laughs> men's, yeah. I fucked up. Well, <laughs> again. Listen, all that means again. is. Men's. Put, put the women, put the, put the, you know, the children to bed because, you know, professional athletes celebrating in Vegas don't do very well. So. I mean, can, I mean, what is the, I want to go there for the parade. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever they do. Yeah. All right, we got anything else on the, on the cup? All right, we had a late addition to the agenda today with some uh, breaking news. Um, how about this? And, and it's, it's on the heels of our talk last week on, on episode 117 about the Indy 500. Will Power is an IndyCar driver, uh, a couple times champion of the IndyCar uh, series. These were his comments about the oh so popular F1. Talking about IndyCar, he said, it's so tough, an amazing field, the toughest field in the world, and people need to know it, especially compared to Formula One. He went on and said, Formula One's a joke as far as competition, but not as far as drivers. They have amazing drivers, as he starts to backpedal, uh, and I feel sorry for them that they don't get to experience the satisfaction we do with our racing because that is the top level of open wheel motorsport. I think Formula One would be much better if they had a formula like IndyCar. I love the tech and the manufacturer side of it. I think it's awesome. But from a spectator watching, man, how cool would it be if everyone had a Red Bull? Discuss. Isn't this like typical, like, Blue collar, white collar, fuck these, this F1 Monaco bullshit. Envy. Get me to the Indy 500. I I don't know. If everybody, let's say everybody had a a Red Bull. uh, The the Ferrari team would still figure out how to way to screw signs during the race. (laughs) Stupid calls on pit stops and tires. And you know, Williams and Haas and those teams, they'd struggle too for the same reasons. Why do you say that? You got, how do, why do you say that? George Russell was racing for Williams and sucked, and George Russell was an incredible driver yesterday. I think 
my point is there, there's still plenty of strategy involved in these races and some of the um, engineers who are making the calls are making bad calls. Oh, hold on. Nace, you're the only one amongst us who has been to an F1 race and an Indy car race this year. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. You came away from the Indy 500. You, you've been talking about this a lot. You've been talking about that series a lot. Like, I feel like you're starting to. Well, and I, I watched Detroit yesterday. Wow. I mean, wow. Was, oh, wow. Gosh. Oh, my God. So I was flipping between, between Can that we talk the about this? Get outside, bro. This I was. Was. <laughs> Yeah, like 95 watched... degree heat. Hey, I mean, holy sh... I, this is I watched... escalated. I watched six innings of a, at the Nats game and then and then came into my office and turned it on. Come on, uh, I can understand uh, why you left the Nats game early, but go ahead. Yeah, well, I actually it. left. I left at the exact right time to a hear the sonic boom and b yeah. not hear the sonic boom from Kyle Schwarber and the rest of the Bills. But here's my think. Here's my take on this. This is a very European versus American problem, and I think that this could potentially be why formula one is a flash in the pan in the u.s if it if it is if it is and that is this americans like winners they like to see competition they like to see somebody win and they, they like to see underdogs win and they like underdogs and that's you right get that in f1 you don't get that in f1 because in f1 as much as what's appreciated with the european fans and there's a reason they call it the constructors championship because the work done designing and building the car is as appreciated as the guys who go out and drive week to week and there are people who just simply admire what red bull has done in constructing a car that is far superior and and they're from a cultural standpoint i think they appreciate the work that has led to this sort of dominance. Uh, and in the US, we want to see balls to the wall, crashes, people, you know, fighting each other. And we, we don't like to think that somebody can be rewarded, you know, just for the work that they put in. Uh, so I think there's a little bit, I'm, not, I'm probably not articulating it quite clearly enough, but I think there's a cultural issue here. Um, and I, I think Formula One, with their big new shiny American. Uh, following should be a little concerned you so, know oh sorry go ahead okay I, I, so i am not an auto racing fan in any way but my son is he's a huge f1 fan and so i actually had a discussion with him and he knows this stuff inside out and he agrees that it's not good for the sport to know that red bull's going to win the race before the race starts mm-hmm uh, and he has an appreciation of the of the building of the cars and the constructors' uh, standings, but you know if you know the what's going to happen, like who wants to watch the Oakland A's right now? Because you know they're going to lose; they're not going right. to win anything. You know that Max is going to win almost every race. What you know the the it's it's sad to see Lewis Hamilton go for like last year was his first year of never winning a race. Is that because he's not a good driver now or his car's not as good? It's it's his car. Yeah. And right, but it's not like Mercedes doesn't have enough money to well, fix that and problem. I, and I understand. They, they've got a cap on what they could. It's like, what, $145 million cap on what you can do with the cars. Um, I don't understand why Red Bull is so far ahead. I don't think it's good for the sport, but I don't think it's going to lose the American interest either. I think I think Americans are intrigued by this international sport. It's very glamorous. Um, they're putting it in cities that love the spot, like Miami Vegas. and Vegas. I don't think it's going to lose that. I think it's they've got to tweak it. But, uh, you know, IndyCar racing, ever since the split of, well, it was IndyCar and um, uh, the other league that when they split years ago, I think yeah. that's what destroyed, that's what destroyed IndyCar racing, and that's a shame because I always found it more exciting than F1. But F1, they, you know, they've got to somehow make it more exciting for the drivers who can. I mean, it doesn't seem like anyone passes anyone in F1. Yeah. Well, that was Bison's point last week, and I thought you're you hinted at a solution that would be kind of interesting, which would be to redo some of these tracks and have wider 
tracks where there could be three cars abreast, yeah. you know, going down the straightaway. You'd get more crashes, you'd get more exciting passing and, uh, and racing. So that would be fun. But to get back I, I to your think... question about what if everybody had the same car, Perez and Leclerc both have pretty damn good cars, and they're still making mistakes that Max just never makes. And the last two races, they both suffered because of it. You know, I, I think one thing, there are periods of dominance that happen in sports. And when they happen, what's kind of fun to see is, is how the sport adjusts to that. I mean, golf has gotten pretty good since, you know, Tiger has gotten into his more senior years because they they tigerized all these courses now yes some of these courses your people are still hitting really really low but i think it brought the field back into play and it makes it more and more competitive what's going to be interesting to see is what does f1 do in reaction to two or three years of max i think we're already seeing it they've already made some changes to what are the specs for the cars i do think there's going to be a, re be a reaction to this i think moose was right i think you know, it's it's not a lot of fun turning on the TV, knowing, well, who's going to come in second, third or fourth? Who else is going to be on the podium? I think they're going to make some changes to address but that. This, this was not the first time that we've had this discussion, because when we all started following everyone right. and liking, you know, the Netflix show, we discussed, well, how much fun is it to know that Mercedes Lewis Hamilton is going to dominate and win pretty much every race? I mean, that was, was that was a discussion. And then it's like, mm -hmm. well, in reaction to that. Mercedes dominating Red Bull came up but well, wasn't it wasn't it a next. lot more palatable though when it was Lewis because Max, well, yeah, Max is a dick well that's why but that's why I was sort of <laughs> suggesting but Pope, that's why I was suggesting that that I think this is as much a cultural issue as anything because it just so happened that when Drive to Survive was out and Americans were starting to pay attention that you had this amazing season of Lewis versus Max where they were crashing into each other where it was coming down to the to the last lap so many times. I mean, yeah. that is an atypical season. Yes. You probably get those seasons once a decade. You know, I, I'm sure that people could go back to Schumacher versus Senna and, and, and some other, you know, go back even further and find really great competitions, but it's rare. It's rare. And I'm going to make a prediction. When the 10-year contract for Miami F1 is up, I'll bet you that ends that race. And they do not sign a new contract and go back to Miami in in eight more years wow eight? Let's, yeah. hope we, let's hope we have a podcast with and, six tattoos on it yeah. <laughs> and, and you're getting night racing not maybe not next year but the year after i mean it's yeah it'd be exciting that would be exciting so we'll see we'll see all right that's it uh, unless you guys got anything else on that well it is an appropriate discussion though moose job because f1 is coming to your backyard yeah it's gonna be it's in montreal is it this this weekend in montreal Next, next weekend next week next we weekend in montreal yeah no it's uh it's i mean to the, the city of montreal has been sold out for months it's a huge event in montreal um it's a huge party uh hoping to go next year with my son uh it's too late to get there this year there was no rooms left and uh um i invite all of you to come up next year i think we should we should That'd talk about this i think yeah, we should do fun i'd love to love you guys, do you guys celebrate uh you guys celebrate fathers in canada yeah we do, do, do father's we, day we we do do Father's Day, yeah. yeah. Nice. Same you, day that we you have fathers there? Yeah. Could you just, have fathers. Could you just say Montreal for me again? Montreal. Did, no, one did more you, time. Montreal. Did Montreal. you notice what, did you pick Montreal. up on that? Montreal. Did you notice he got a little French accent all of a sudden? Yeah. Montreal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why yeah. I wanted to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> les, les, habit, les Canadiens habitants. Well, it was, it was adorable when you were saying Montreal. <laughs> now it just sounded terrible. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, All right, who's got a? I, that's what I was going for. Is adorable. Yes. <laughs> who's got a punchable face? I have. I got, I got milk. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Miller. And he, I mean, those are two obvious ones. We could, you know, that could be a feature work on one slap. show. We could, you could exchange milk slaps live. Yeah. Oh, that would be. That would be the end of the podcast. No one would. No one would watch us ever again. <laughs> I have two short. Uh, punchable faces. W one is, uh, you know, I know we joke back and forth 
hear about the whole live and PGA stuff. I think all of us would rather have one happy tour again and live never having been created, but um, the Arabs are going to destroy professional sports, one sport at a time. And the next up is soccer. Yep. And, yep. you know, one of the best athletes in the world to play soccer, Kareem Benzema, who's won champions after champions for Real Madrid has been the latest after Ronaldo to sell out and go to, but who, listen, I mean, if they want to pay me $600 million to play soccer or any athlete for that matter, it's hard to turn that down. It's, it's obscene money. Now they're talking about spending, you know, a hundred billion dollars to invest into a Saudi soccer league. So that's the most um, popular league. And it's, it's really, it's going to do damage to the sport. Aren't I think so that's one. Messi? How's, is there Messi's any, very close. Messi's there, very close. He, I just want to know, is there any chance the Saudis are looking for a podcast? Sponsor? Yes. They, yes. Sponsor? Um, we, we can talk to them about it. We might Do they feel like couple, investing in a right. podcast? I'm just wondering. We, just we might like have to drop a couple dollars. members from the group. I'm, but... I'm not below that. <laughs> right. I, I'd wear a, Ram, a Ramco shirt or... You know. <laughs> so my son is getting on. I'm out. I'm not out. going to be able to be part of that podcast. Yeah, I'm out of no rods out. I am too. <laughs> My second punch. Uh, I, I don't know how many Indonesian fans we have, but with apologies, I'm punching your entire country. Um, oh boy. Wow. It, it, some QBs start war against oh the boy. country. Oh boy. The country of Indonesia was due well, to we, host the U the U20 World Cup in soccer, which is really the next biggest stage for men's soccer below the World Cup. These are these are the the guys who are going to be playing, some of whom are going to be playing the 2026 World Cup. And Indonesia was set to host it right now. Uh, but once they found out that Israel qualified for its first time ever in the U20 World Cup, they said Israel's not allowed to come here and participate. And fortunately, FIFA did the right thing and moved immediately the U-20 World Cup away from Indonesia and brought it to Argentina. And as irony would have it, Israel has now fought its way through Japan, Uzbekistan, and now the number one seed, Brazil, and is playing in the semifinals against Uruguay this Thursday. Um, so maybe Israel and FIFA are doing their punching of their own of Indonesia. But I just think this is the whole point of sports, whether it's Olympics, World Cup soccer, whatever it is, let's take the politics let's take the religion let's take these things out of it and let the folks who compete by the way as it would happen when israel won three two over brazil two of the goals for israel were scored by arab israelis so suck it indonesia were wow. you uh, uh were you more surprised uh indonesia made that statement or that fifa did the right thing i think i'm more surprised that indonesia did that yeah. I mean, that was re really atrocious. Oh, absolutely. And there's, absolutely. there's, uh, there's struggle so mightily right now. They could have used the revenue. It was just amazingly dumb. Yeah. All right. Any more punches? Those are legit. We started two international incidents uh, while in one podcast. So, um, by the way, I'd, I would like to say that my, punchable face last week of yelling and backswing guy didn't seem to resonate with anyone because it was horrible yesterday That's somebody good. yelled yabba dabba do <laughs> <laughs> which is so fucking that, annoying yabba dabba oh do. my god <laughs> <sighs> that's actually pretty amazing all right who's got a lasso rooster yeah i have one i'm gonna revisit um, my lasso from last week, Liam Hendricks, um, you know, we were, we were celebrating the fact that he had made it back to triple a and was looked like he was returning to baseball, but still hadn't found his form and had a, a ERA over 10 in the minors. Well, he came, he came back up to the white Sox, and, uh, yesterday was national cancer survivors day in the United States. And, uh, Hendricks came in in the ninth against the Tigers, struck out two and got the third out uh, for, a, for his first win since he had cancer. So wow. you know, on, on, a, on, the, uh, on that day of all days, 
he seems like he might be all the way back. And uh, so great for Liam Hendricks. It's good to see him back. He was, uh, you know, a massive superstar closer. And I'd like, you know, hopefully he'll be back there again soon. Can, can I add one? I don't know if you guys were watching baseball on Friday night. Uh, I happened to watch and I had no idea who Sarah Lang was before Friday night. I don't know if you guys have heard the story. She was a, she is the preeminent baseball researcher who worked for ESPN starting yeah. in 2015. At the age of 28, she was diagnosed with ALS. And uh, on Friday was Lou Gehrig Day. I guess that's the anniversary of his passing. And they were hanging these Sarah stars or Lang stars in every major league broadcast booth. And she's now 30 years old and she probably has a year or two to, to live. But her, her, um, joy for the game and the, just listening to the announcers talk about like uh, on on the blue jays broadcast dan shulman's our local broadcaster who used to work with espn and carl ravich they had carl ravich on and the way he talked about sarah lang and her uh <clears throat> dignity and her uh drive to try and find a cure for als it was great and and you know it, it, it was a, such an inspiring story and so sad at the same time yeah that's, that's a good, a good lasso Nice. How do, you, how do you say lasso in French? So, spelled L A S S E U X. Lasso. 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 If we're keeping track, Toronto's eight and a half back. Just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. Um, and, 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 sir, we, we play 162 games. Yeah. Well, all right. And you know, you what, start, it? You know what started their downfall? Their dumbass coach trying to mix it up with the Yankees. Oh, God. So we've taken oh. on Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, now Canada. We're gonna get we're really we're gonna start yeah, with fucking no, Canada. No, no, no. You know what? Take take Canada on. There's no resistance. Okay, like <laughs> we're <laughs> aware. <Wow>. We're, we're <laughs> aware. Have, a, <laughs> have a little pride <laughs> boost, John. Come on, grow some honest. moose balls. It's, you can't be <laughs> honest about certain things. Damn it, yeah. Miller. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't want to give milk any ammunition. It's easier just to say, come on, take it, you know, take me out. <laughs> Buzzer beaters. Who's got one? I've got one because it kind of tails on the uh, discussion here. Uh, my Texas Rangers mm. tied the 1936 my New York Texas Yankees. Rangers. My Texas for, Rangers. For 10 run uh, games, they've had. 16 games where they've scored over 10 runs in the first 58 games, which ties the uh. 1936 New York Yankees. It is a ridiculous bombardment down uh, at Globe Life that was very unexpected, very refreshing, and we'll see where it goes. But Milk, what's their record now? in those 10? Don't look now, Milk, but they're 38 and 20, and they're only one game back in the loss column. They have the second best record in the major league. It's a shame you can't root for them, though. They're not your team. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. What's, right. it, what's right. their well, record I, in those 10 games? Josh Hamilton still with them? Uh, Josh Hamilton is <laughs> I love long that guy. gone. But, but thank you. For <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> uh, Bison, I, you're dying to. I, I assume they've lost one of their games. They scored over 10 runs. That's why I have asking. no idea. I was just wondering if you know. I, I think they're 16 and 0. I mean, typically you don't lose games when you score double digits. Do you, uh, Pope, do you know all... who has the best record, the two best records in baseball since May 1st? Since May 1st? I would assume the Obviously Rangers. Obviously the Yankees. The Rangers and the Yankees. Yeah, bro. Oh, 21 funny. and 9 Rangers, 21 and 10 Yankees. Yeah, wow. still six back. Yeah. Still six oh, and, back, but would you, would, someone's getting a little nervous. I can would you tell. look at that? The Rays just beat the Red Sox. Uh oh. Mm. Yeah, that's a tough <laughs> task. Anybody else have a buzzer beater? I do. Hey, uh, Speaking uh, of the Red Sox, go ahead. You go first. No, no, you go ahead. Speaking of the Red Sox, uh, sadly, it looks like Chris Sale's career may be ending. Uh, he's 34 years, years old and he's coming off Tommy John surgery. And then um, this weekend, they pulled him from. Uh, a game that he started in the fourth inning with shoulder pain. He's missed over 50 games each of the last two seasons. I just think he's done, and it's sad because he's a damn good pitcher. I feel like that's that's been his story his whole career, though, right? I mean, even more than the last two seasons, hasn't yeah. he? He just seems very fragile. Yep, yep. Shout out to the real-life Zava. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Zava from Ted Lasso was uh, 
based upon Zlatan Ibramovich, Ibramovich, Ibramovich. Anyway, I'll let Moose say it in you. Canadian. God bless Abron- you. I think. Abronov- I, I, no, I, there's no Canadian pronunciation for that. Oh, for fuck's sake. He had a, he had a really storied career uh, for Sweden and many of the world's best teams finishing up at AC Milan. He was uh, a one of a kind, which is why there was a character kind of based off of him with just being excessive confidence, one name, um, quirky, the whole look, uh, a lot, a lot of famous uh, highlight plays, uh, a great um, for the world that really loves soccer. That's a that's a big one to hang it up. So shout out to Zlatan, the real life Zava. Anybody else? I got one. If- yeah, I'll go real quick. Shut I, I and I'm still trying to figure out if I like him or not, but I this helps. Really cool. Uh, and I'm sorry to bring up Victor Hovland. Oh for fuck's sake. I mean, really. But it was really cool to see him today after he won yesterday, goes out and he is caddying for his buddy from Oklahoma State, the golf golf teammate, uh, who's doing a 36 hole. Uh, U.S. Open qualifier. He was on his bag, probably still is right now, all day today. That was pretty, pretty awesome to to see after winning yesterday. He's a so good shout guy. out to him. Well, I was I was actually going to mention him too, and just give a buzzer beater to golf in general because um, you know once again we had a pretty compelling tournament. Yes, I was particularly interested as a fellow Georgetown prep alum, Denny McCarthy was searching for his first tour victory but putting that aside you know sudden death playoff round uh in front of jack great tournament you had you had uh even had rory in it until the last couple holes scheffler made a huge run uh and then you get hovland gets the win uh spieth is there i mean all the the stars were there um isn't that and a shout out to the PGA Tour? That's, that's what I'm saying. Who, who, you said well, who needs general. who needs live? It was going to be my comment. Exactly. Uh, you you just very quickly, you know, after after Kepka won, everyone thought, well, this is going to be the you know this is the the mending of the fences. But once again, the PGA puts out a, a quality event where uh, you just don't care that people who aren't there they're not missed at all. So yeah. that's my buzzer beater. By the way, I think he. Absolutely, just shit his pants. I think you could just see it in McCarthy. His yeah, he just, I mean, I yeah, he obviously I, he did. really did. I, I think he like was just freaking out. I, I Although, I mean, the other side. I mean, the other part of it too. I think you're right, but I also think part of it too is, I mean, he saved so many pars. He really didn't play well the last five holes. The only thing that kept him in it was his putter. Yeah. I mean, he could have been three down. Um, when the what at the end of 18 instead of tied if he hadn't putted lights out Hits so really I, I just loose, loose yeah shots. he and he probably was nervous but he did not play well um I, th- I don't disagree with you i just i think the puckering up came by about the 13th hole not not the 18th all right anybody got anything else cheer about right. albert albert pujols Accepted a job as assistant to the commissioner of baseball. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. Are that could be good for baseball to have some yeah. recent recent players involved. I like that. I like that. Decision making. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good stuff, guys. Have a good week. Have a good week. We'll, uh, All right. Thanks, thanks for Moose. Having me again. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on, man. See you in Philly. See you guys. In Philly. See you.